Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for November 11th. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in Ezekiel chapter 16 and Hebrews chapter 8. The title of my devotional uh, is Remember God's Grace. And we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 12 which says, I also put a ring in your nostril, earrings in your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. This chapter is the longest single prophecy in Ezekiel, which recounts Israel's faithlessness in spite of God's grace. Um, It first of all pictures Judah as an abandoned, pitiful, dying baby girl whom God, the king, saved, cleansed, and made his own wife. He clothed her with beauty and raised her up to be his queen. Um, And so that's the beginning part where God shows himself just... He shows himself loving, gracious, compassionate. Um, When we were dead in our trespasses and sins, God did this for us. He watched us. And and for Israel, he did that as well. They were captive to, um, in Egypt, slaves, and God brought them out. And he brought them to himself. And in many ways, the Sinai covenant is like a marriage covenant. God um, binds himself to them. And um, they become, he even... He promises that he will take care of them and always be there for them. They will be his people and he will be their God. But this queen, Ezekiel goes on to recount, scorned God's love and became a prostitute. Um, did terrible and shameful acts. She, this, and this, the way Israel acted was that She gave all she had been given by God so that she could be with those she lusted after. So she she used the gifts, the adornments, the those things that made her so beautiful, in order to be pleasing to to others, and scorning God's grace, scorning what He had done for her. And so then the prostitute was then made a slave for her crimes. So even though. This is actually referring to Judah, the the southern kingdom of Israel. Um, She was worse than all previous adulterers. Um, A comparison is made with Samaria and Sodom. Yet God still promised to redeem her. The oracle ends with hope, though. Um, But not something good in Judah, but rather in spite of her complete unfaithfulness. Um, Israel is able to hope in God's ability to bring reversal and bring her back to himself. And God's grace has shown that it will prevail. Um, and it, again, it shows that while there, uh, Israel, Judah was never deserving because of God's grace. And so just as God showed compassion once to Judah, he would do so again and bring her back. This story reminds us of the prodigal son, that no matter how despicable and ruinous a life has become due to wickedness, God offers new hope and life. God is able to raise us up, cleanse us, and give us inheritance, and even make us kings and queens. Uh, We actually belong to him is also the note. We're to understand that we're to be faithful to him. So Ephesians 1 verse 3 to 6 explains that God chose us, predestined us, and accepted us because he loved us. Is there anything too difficult for God? Do we, do we appreciate that because the grace of God is in our lives, he's at work in us. He won't leave us alone. Even, as, uh, even when we turn away from him, we can think of the prophet Jonah who ran away from God's will for his life. But God, that isn't the end of the story. God went after his, his prophet and brought him back, even though it meant being swallowed by a, a great fish. God knows what we need. He lets us go sometimes so we see how dark it is to be away from him. But he always is accepting us back. And the purpose is that we would never want to go from him. That we would hate sin and its effects and its destructiveness uh, in our lives. Will you turn to him in repentance and fall upon his grace? Understanding that he's washed you, cleansed you, sanctified you, set you apart. He's made you his own. He's called you his own. His own, your, his own child brought you into his family, given you a great purpose, given you his peace, his joy, his righteousness, and given you a hope for the future that he will also complete what he's begun. 
why would we want to go anywhere else? We need to stay with him. We need to remember God's grace, what he's done for us. Every day is a day to remember. We were once lost, but now we're found. We were once in wickedness, sin, and darkness, but now we've come into the light, and we've come into his righteousness, and we can walk in a way that's pleasing to him. He's at work in us. He's poured out his spirit and given us everything we need for life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the story of of Israel and Judah and how, Lord, you, you redeemed them and showed them. And even when they were faithless, that isn't the end of the story. You still went after them. And I thank you that you're a God of second chances, that as long as we have breath, we're able to respond to your grace and turn to you. And so I pray that for us. I pray that, Lord, if there's any sin in us, that we repent of it and turn to you. And Lord, if there's anyone that uh, in our lives that doesn't know you or has turned their back on you. Lord, get a hold of their hearts. Um, turn them back. Remind them of your grace and of what you've done for them in the past. Uh, and Lord, I just thank you how much you love us. We're not deserving, but you are gracious. In your name we pray. Amen.